from this movie will get Cheech and Chong up the yin yang. There's the tagline right no, there. No, that's our gay movie. Oh, that's the gay movie. <laughs> Hey, Den of Geek fans, Aaron Sagers here, and we are at South by Southwest in the Den of Geek studios, and I'm surrounded by literally icons right here. We've got uh, Cheech Marin, Tommy Chong, and Dave Bouchelle, and they are here for the movie Cheech and Chong's last movie, right? This is yep. it. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Okay, see, we're starting with the tease right away. I, I first want to ask about sort of the framing device of the film, because we see... These guys in a car, they're driving through the desert, right? Uh, Dave, start with that. Like, why was that sort of your setup for this film? Who doesn't want to see Cheech and Chong driving in a car in the desert? It's like saying, uh, do you like puppies? Right? Also, it's a movie trick, too, that directors use all the time. They capture you in a car. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting there, and you know, the director has to say, speak up louder or look over here. That's all the directions he gives. Yeah. And then the rest is uh, Dave's expertise, which is uh, getting the conflict going. Well, there you go. It's a, it's a great mechanism for having this conversation, this discourse between characters and real people. So with that said, and Cheech, why don't you start first on this? What was something that you kind of learned about uh, Tommy, about Chong, during this setup, during this framing device? Oh, he's stone deaf. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't hear a damn word, you know? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> How about you? What was something that you learned about Cheech or some, like, something that kind of came to the fore during this setup in the car? Like I used to say in my stand-up act, you know, uh, you can't make a rich Mexican do nothing. <laughs> I noticed the self-editing there. <laughs> I think we're, I don't know, we're a family-friendly show, but I think uh, kids are Well, familiar. I don't yeah. like to fuck up on TV. You know, <laughs> that's one thing I don't want to do. You know. They're very yin-yang, you know, and there's a lot more to them than the characters that they play. And they're way more, way more bright and philosophical and wise, and we have a lot to learn from their story and their life experiences. Mm -hmm. From this movie, you'll get Cheech and Chong up the yin yang. Yes, there's lots of Cheech and Chong. Yeah. There's the tagline right no, there. No, that's our movie. game movie. Oh, that's the game. <laughs> Cheech, I, I read a quote, I think, that was from you, attributed to you, that we're not, we're not friends, we're brothers. Well, we're friends, but we're not, we're more brothers than friends. I mean, friendship is included in that, but we're like brothers. Sometimes your brother can piss you off, and sometimes your brother can save your life. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. you want to just kick the shit out of the brother. Boy, you, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, with that said, how have how has sort of the disagreement or arguing style changed between you guys throughout the years? Because look, I'm the youngest of five kids, and I know I still I still fight with my siblings, but it's changed. It's a different vibe now. How has that changed between you guys? Well, we turned our agreements and disagreements into a lot of cash. And so when, you know, when you're making money, whatever it is you're doing, you want to keep doing it. And, and that happened to be the case. You know? It's a line when you cross, when you step on the stage or in the, in the recording studio or in front of a camera, that everything else drops away. And then what we do best is communicate with each other when that process happens. And yeah. that's still going on. That's yeah. That's clearly something I have not done well with my siblings is turning the arguments into cash. Oh, right. And conflict plays a part in it, you know? That friction is what makes something happen. Dave, this is your directorial debut. Obviously, I know that you produced and worked on a lot of other films, but a big one to go with. What was something as you're kind of going through this archival footage, you're going through uh, just assembling the story of the documentary, what was that kind of moment or piece of footage that you're like, okay, this is, this is gonna really knock their socks off? There's a lot of great footage that no one's seen in the film. There's a, a four hour interview with Playboy in 1984 we were able to draw from. There's another, I think, three and a half hours from Geraldo Rivera in 1980 that we were able to pull from. So uh, there's a lot of rich, rich story. And uh, for the fans, you know, performance, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I know the concept began as a scripted concept. That it, then... did, it didn't begin that way. It was just that's how I met Cheech and Chong, and that's how I met Robbie Chong, our producer. Mm -hmm. so, My daughter. Yes. When that film didn't happen and another thing fell through, it was just kind of natural progression, and uh, uh, no one had done it, which yeah. seemed crazy that no one had done the definitive documentary. And then from there, we just wanted to expand it a little bit and make it a little bit more dynamic than people sitting on couches and cutting to archival and cutting back to people on couches. So that's how the, the, the desert was born. And just get them together because mm -hmm. there's also their individual portrait interviews. So now that this has happened and it's titled, you know, this is said to be the last movie, but has this kind of energize, re-energize the idea of maybe doing a true scripted narrative We film. just signed a seven picture deal with Paramount is that that we're gonna teach and chong throughout the ages and their grandchildren. <laughs> I would watch it. People would, have been like, waiting <laughs> for a long time. We're set, Cheech and I are set to do another movie coming up. We, we don't wanna muddy the waters yeah. by telling anybody uh, anything about it yet because mm -hmm. we're here to talk about uh, the, the, the documentary. incredible documentary that they made. Yeah, but, yeah, but we uh, are on in Call of Duty this year. I saw that. That that is wild. That that is wild. It's far out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Think I hit a bad batch, man. And that's a smoke grenade. What does it mean, I guess, to be to be rock and roll rebels, uh, to be stoner comedians in 2024 in an era of legalization, but also where where rock and roll is maybe, is it less rebellious? I don't know. What does it mean to be a rock and roll rebel in 2024? <laughs> it means that you're, you're, you're saying a lot of stuff you're not supposed to be saying. And, uh, you know, that whatever cultural appropriation, all that, all that crap. Uh, <laughs> I'm just glad we went through the era we went through and we, we got it here. We're here now. We can sit back and just play our old stuff and, 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 and capitalize on it. But right now, you're, you're not, we had to really literally quit touring because it, we started getting heckled by the, the Trump uh, crowd. And uh, it was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, we don't want to offend anybody because we, we're, we're just want to be funny with everybody, but it got a little dangerous. So we had to uh, quit doing live performances. Yeah. I thought you wanted to offend everybody. No, I don't want to offend people with a gun, you know, or, 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 or bad intentions. You know, I want them to say, I'm with you, but you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. In a sort of cool way. Yeah. Have you, have you noticed that there is this kind of connection to a younger audience that was not even born, maybe their parents weren't even born when you guys were first exploding onto the scene. It's amazing because we've hooked together four generations right now. Uh, four generations have enjoyed us in some form or another. But you, And you gotta remember, uh, there's a whole lot of generations, their first memory of laughing was listening to Cheech and Chong. That their parents or their dad said, hey, listen to this. And, and, and next thing you know, we got families, uh, you know, communicating with each other. Living right? with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. And, and uh, it was all because of the connection that we made kids laugh. And if you make kids laugh, you can make adults laugh because what are adults but big kids? And, and that was our secret, you know. We showed the film to somebody who was turned on to Cheech and Chong by their father. And he used to listen to the cassettes in the car with his son. And when he watched the film, he watched it with his 15-year-old son. And he thanked us because he was able to give his 15-year-old son the experience that his father gave. So it, it, it translated, you know, set three generations right there. So it was nice. And the kid genuinely was just really excited about the film. I have to, I have to sincerely, sincerely say that that is sort of my experience, is that I remember the Dave sketch, like the, the tapes from my parents and then my older siblings. And then for me, as a little, little kid, you know, before I could get into like Up and Smoke, it was the Corsican Brothers. And I know that's not necessarily a movie that everybody loves, but for me, it was like, oh, that was my Cheech and Chong introduction. Yeah. You know, I've been uh, quizzing people when they come out, says, how old were you when you saw your first Cheech and Chong movie? 
35, 36. And what movie was that? The Corsican Brothers. Because they were nine years old or something, or you know, ten years old at that time. That's the first one they saw, and they liked that thing about it. you hit one brother and the other one feels it. It was on that level. Yeah, and the, and, and the Corsican Brothers was a, a movie that we did consciously without marijuana, you know, without pot in it. We did. It was just a it was a period piece. I mean, there was a lot of pot behind the scenes. <laughs> but, oh, well, that mean, way, yeah, yeah. But you know, showing it like we like we did with the other movies. Because we were so uh, ahead of our time, we actually changed the we pot laws. We were heads of our time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hope people get? What's like the final kind of hope that you, that you have that people will take away from this film about what do they think about Cheech and Chong now? What do they think about your legacy? What's kind of that feeling you want people to take away from this? Well, it's more of what they give us. <laughs> well, we yeah. touch on the cash part. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that happens. No, what, what they're going to what they're going to take away is that that success doesn't always come uh, planned. The success really is is relying on the universe. What they know? really learn is that you have to see this picture like five or six times the first week uh, to really understand what it's all about. No, that that's me. Oh, you have to understand. Yeah. yeah. Well, more than five or six times. <laughs> what, what's your hope, Dave? Oh, just that it lifts the veil on their persona, but also makes them laugh a lot and feel. And they learn, you know, they learn about them and their career, but also about themselves a little bit. It goes way back. When I was a kid, you know, when I'm talking about 13, 14 years old, uh, the Pachuco era was big in the States, you know, the Zoot Zoot riots and all that. And the fashion-wise, the Zoot Zoot came into being. And my, my older brother, three years old, he was a jock, and he they hated the Zoot Zoot crowd. Well, I, I used to walk to school with girls that loved the Zoot Zoot look. And so I tried to be, you know, a, a miniature little pachuco up in Canada. And I had no clue of, of the, where that culture came from. But then as we studied, you know, learned about the Zoot Zoot riots, it was a Chicano influence on America that created style, language, uh, marijuana. That's where marijuana came from. It was uh, the immigrants coming up from Mexico bringing their medicine with them. Mm -hmm. and, 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 of course, uh, the, the white press demonized it right away. And, and, and that's why marijuana became illegal. It was so, so the, the, you could arrest people. Like I'm watching on TV where people get arrested for having the smell of marijuana in their car. Well, we, with our movie, with Up and Smoke especially, we debunked all that stuff, and now pot is legal, in, at least in Thanks parts of Thanks to Cheech and Chong. You can send your donations to cheechandchong.com, care of Dave Bichelle.